to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday, October 25th, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers. We had a Thursday night football game. We've got news. We've got the forecast. We've got matchups. We've got the wheel of shame. We've got a lot going on. And I just want to say, right here at the top, I saw nothing. You saw nothing? I saw oh, the, the nothing. end of the game? The end of the game? You are Team Ref. You I are Team saw Ref. nothing. Yeah, I expect nothing. Less I, than, than Big Ref. I want away. to let me give you my perspective of this. The players should settle this thing on the field. If you can't overcome a little tiny twist of the head, you aren't a football player, NFL style. We don't mess up. We're the refs. Man, that sounds that sounds pretty big ref over there. I, I you know, Mike, yesterday you came in, you gave us a real good it's football time because you knew it was I gonna be great. Told and you. honestly, we really did have an we, awesome we, we had fifty eight minutes of awesome football. Well, look, I, I appreciate what Kevin O'Connell did at the end of the game. And if you're not familiar with how the game ended, the Rams were ahead by eight points. The Vikings got the ball back late. Uh, with under two minutes to go, backed up in, in near their own end zone. There was a an egregious face mask that took place in the end zone that somehow every referee was blocked there from were, seeing. There were only, what, three or four people in the entire world who didn't see it? Well, but it... In, One of them was looking straight forward towards it? In their defense, it, it happened far away from where the ball was. Like... Mm. Two and a half feet. Yeah. So, look, the, the face mask took place. It was not called. It turned into a safety. The game was over. Yeah. Kevin O'Connell came out and I think did what a head coach should do in this situation. Didn't dwell on it. Said, you know, we're not going to just focus on one call. The, the, the game went, you had whatever, 58 more minutes that you could have put yourself in a better position. You never want, I mean, that's the line, right? You never want to be in the spot where one play, one penalty costs you the game well you don't want to be the head coach where you just lost the game and now you're going to lose money because you come out and and tell the truth about what the refs they did. were they were not able to i mean they came down and they look like the most perfect offense ever this has been the vikings by the way i believe sam Darnold's over 80 percent completion in the first quarter this year the script like every coach has got the the script you know to start the game mm -hmm. and kevin o'connell's scripts are real hot they're like nice, yeah. Um, but you can't script the whole game. We've learned that you can only script a quarter. Yeah, that's all you could do. You run out of ink. Defenses obviously make adjustments. The first four drives of the game were touchdowns. It was awesome. But we're burying the lead here, fellas. The lead story of this game is Puka's back, baby. Yeah. Oh, I hope you played him. But listen, a lot of people out there had Puka. They weren't sure. There were reports of he'll be limited, and maybe you didn't play him. You should not be unhappy. You should not be sad. He got away with an injury-free game where he showed he is that dude, and the win gives you a little bit of peace over the Stafford-Darnold trade not happening, which is probably the biggest puka fear I had. Yeah, so it doesn't seem realistic for that to happen when, you know, they did acknowledge teams have called about Cooper Cup, but... This team rattled off a ton of wins at the end of last year. Now they've got their their pieces back. Yeah, th this is great news. Even their punt returner was really good running the football I, in this game. I believe he's on pace ah, for yes. 24 No, he got his job back at the end. I touchdowns. don't know if you saw that. He got to return one of the late he, punts? Yeah, he, or uh, I think it was like the last. It's a high was leverage. It the final punt? High leverage situation. Yeah. Kyron's pretty good. <laughs> Dude. He, he's great. He he's is great. He's unbelievable. It's no Blake Corum, but he's decent. Yeah, so great game. Uh, Kyron was great. Aaron Jones didn't get into the end zone. He was efficient, but he was not. Uh, he did not have a big fantasy day. No, but he was the workhorse. This was which has been the case now. If you look at this, Ty Chandler's his, his snap counts, they've been in nothing. Yeah, but this one was forty-six to two. Yeah, 
Ty Chandler is like, like the, straight what's, up what's insurance. The, what's the tool song, Jay? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. What is that? Is like forty six and, and two? two? Is it? Yeah, that's yeah, okay. Yeah, I was like, that's the song. <laughs> Justin bam, Jefferson bam, was bam. eight eight for one fifteen. Did not find the end zone. Puka seven for one hundred six. Cooper Cup did score five for fifty one. He looked like he was kind of, ironically, the one that got off to the slower return. Yeah, yes, just didn't quite look like himself. But um, Puka played thirty two percent of snaps. Well, and 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 you said this yesterday when the news report was breaking that he's going to play a limited allotment, which he did, thirty two percent. You said verbatim the plays that he plays they're gonna go to him because that's when he's on the field they're just gonna design plays for him take advantage of it and then get him off the field they did demarcus robinson scored twice on two catches uh just to you know twist. yeah if you're if you're mad about anything just be mad about demarcus robinson I, yeah I because this Stealing is the one time you chances. couldn't have you wouldn't have played Demarcus Robinson. You would have tried to play him all these weeks. You didn't have yeah. other receivers. He finally gives you two touchdowns. You, you know what's ironic about this? I think this is actually um, the offense that is best for Demarcus Robinson. Demarcus Robinson is not an insurance wide receiver. He proved that. Like when these two guys went down, he can't step up and be a one for an NFL offense. But I drafted a lot of best ball shares of Demarcus Robinson coming into this year based upon what he did at the second half of last year when they had Puka and Cup healthy. He. He was around, you know, the defenses are focused on those two guys. Yeah. And Demarcus Robinson could be a great three here. So going forward, um, you know, a, a DFS play or so, deeper leagues, a deep league where you just, you know, I've seen people have the tweets where it's like, no, I'm in a deep league. I got to get people who are not rostered, who I could throw in a lineup for a start. I think going forward, Demarcus Robinson might actually be that better with Puka and Cooper than he was when he was, you know, quote unquote, the one. It is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Every Friday, we give a $100 gift card away to fantasychamps.com and a t shirt uh, from our fantasy footballers shop. And Kelly Minnick. Kelly Minnick wins today. Thank you for supporting the show over there at jointhefoot.com. And uh, we will get that gift card out to you. We appreciate everybody that supports the show over there. And I can tell you, we are. Um, Using the football analogy of uh, the field, we are at the five-yard line when it comes to releasing the in-season app that will finally have the Join the Foot tools within it, which you can already get on the website, but we're bringing that to the app, and that it, we're on the five. Yeah, and it's third and goal, so we're not running the ball here. No false starts. We're looking to drop back. We don't want to lose 10 yards here. That's the way it doesn't happen, so let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's just keep it above board. Here we go. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Calvin Ridley remains sidelined on Thursday. Whoops, that is not good. I mean, we hope that the Wednesday mispractice was a veteran day of rest when you completely do not practice on a Thursday with a foot injury, which I believe Calvin Ridley has dealt with a foot injury in the past. It's a little bit scary. Um, I know he, he was your second half sleeper, but that... I don't remember that. <laughs> that's, that's good um yeah th this is concerning to me i mean i think most people probably weren't starting ridley maybe with hopkins being traded out they're like okay i can start him i i would pump the brakes on ridley if he's actually he's, got a ridley has masonitis yeah okay that's fair i mean but you're gonna have levititis uh, when he comes but back. that's at least uh, at least he'll throw it down the field i i'm looking to see if we have any practice report updates for today on Calvin Ridley. Because they don't have DeAndre Hopkins, by the way. They can't, like, borrow him for one more week now that Ridley's going to be out. Not that their passing game can work. But I'm like, I'm ser I am search for Calvin Ridley, right? And I'm getting the top tweets. And I don't like that the third one is, quote, I can't believe Andy Holloway doubled down on Calvin Ridley. <laughs> this will either be the biggest fantasy comeback or bust of all time. Again, you didn't have yeah. to do it. Right. That is true, Mr. <laughs> Dell. Hey. Um, Travis Etienne limited again on Thursday, hamstring injury. My position on Travis Etienne is prove it on the field before you are going to prove it in my lineup. Yeah, they've said he's a game-time decision. I doubt he plays. I, I really do. I think they're going to – with with how well uh, Bigsby's been playing. I mean, I don't have any inside information. It just seems like 
if he's limited and he's a game time well, decision, and this is a hamstring that you can re-aggravate. If he plays, do you play him? No, if he plays, I don't play him or Bigsby personally. Okay. Um, or or Dearness Johnson. I'm I'm just out on the Jaguars running backs. If he's out, I think you're going to probably end up playing Bigsby. It feels like it could be a trap. Uh, the nice thing about Bigsby is he's good at um playing the running back position. Mm -hmm. So sure, you know. He can make the most of the tight portion of the game. Tua Tungavailoa cleared concussion protocol. Will start in week eight versus Arizona. Right. Here we go. <laughs> Tyreek Hill uh, was added to the injury report on Thursday, but then later declared healthy. Yeah, I mean, all this is receiving pretty options frequent are healthy. with uh, Hill. Yeah, Jalen Waddell still limited on Thursday with the quad injury, but very exciting. This is good news. Zay Flowers returned to practice on Friday. He had missed Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah. He was a Monday night football game. So when you talk about, you know, giving a guy a break, giving him an up and he hurt himself in the game. That but, but that's why I well, I was very concerned of like well, once he hurt his ankle, he I I don't know if he did anything else. He was in the game, but it was oh, is this he went back in the game, he was able to play, and then it swelled up and now he's unable to play the, the following week. But it's at least it, it's good news, and if, if Zay plays, I'm playing him as usual. Bucky Irving didn't practice against, uh, didn't practice on Wednesday or Thursday. He did warm up and was seen at practice on Friday. We'll monitor that. Jonathan Taylor and Chris Olave joined the full practice club. Yeah. So, so. Well, th th I mean, th these are two important players you need back. Chris Olave, a full, yeah. a full practice on a Thursday in concussion protocol signals that he will probably tomorrow have the uh, in a, in the meeting with the independent neurologist and presumably be given the green light. That is the normal pr progression that you, almost always happens at this stage. So I would expect to have Chris Olave. And then Jonathan Taylor, high ankle sprain, missed the three games. We talk about it. High ankle sprains are usually zero or three games missed. He missed it. Fully practicing. He's back. We told you it was mild. <laughs> we have DK Metcalf not practicing Wednesday or Thursday with an MCL sprain. Yeah. He was going to try to practice today was the last thing I saw. J Jaden Daniels didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday, not spotted at practice today. Hey. I would say he is uh, Jaden D. Yeah, the, well, the, 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 re <laughs> the, the reports the were D for, D for doubtful. doubtful. Yeah, 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 yeah yes, and yes. That's the old adage that everyone knows. Yeah, it's just it sounded exactly like doubtful. Yeah. Um. In addition to him not being present that's for like, you know, practice city, today, Dallas, the Big D. Yeah, it's the Big Doubtful for sure. That's everyone what knows. I always think about the Big D. So Jaden Daniels you was do. not at practice. However, there were three other quarterbacks there. So he, it, it's. I would be you'd, blown away if he plays football say this week. He's doubtful. I would. I'd, I would. Those. I would say the full word. Yeah, I would say he's doubtful. Yeah. That's exactly what um, I'd say. Debo returned to limited practice. So did George Kittle. Sunday night, have a plan. Did not practice Wednesday or Thursday. Juwan Jennings didn't. Um, doubtful for this week. He's, he's Daniels. He's uh, yeah, Juwan D. All right, Lad McConkey didn't practice Wednesday or Thursday. Oh, he has not looked himself at all. He, he had such an opportunity without uh, Quentin out there and and them desperately in need of help, and he's not been available. Yeah, he's he's playing through an injury, but he's clearly injured. He didn't look great, and the fact that he's missing practice on a Thursday completely, I don't think this is a player I want to start until you see him healthy again. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We'll catch you up with any other news that breaks during the show. The illustrious deucers, and, uh, you know, it's a full allotment. Oh, wait. It's oh, not a no. full allotment over there. We're missing one, one again? Two, I see. I see Papa Josh. I see Al on. Borland. One, two. No, I don't. I don't see all three of them. Hmm. Papa Josh, are you here? I am here. Okay, Al. I am here. Okay, Falcon. We need a. We need a Falcon insurance. Yeah, we're taking out a big this, policy. We are. We are just. We are hemorrhaging yeah. product. We don't know where he is. We're not saying where he is, but we don't. You know. They're, He's they're, not. The, the I'm betting, not, not the, saying where the, he is. The betting market does have odds. <laughs> We've got the forecast. We're jumping in. It's time for Fantasy Forecast, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. You know, the, the big D is a different, it's a different thing for the Falcon. 
You know what I mean? Dad, like, <laughs> on, honestly, growing up in the right household with our stomachs, that was it was the big diarrhea, one hundred percent. Um, and it has it has so caused thank, some, it's caused some issues. Thank you for letting us with the know vernacular. That. Okay. Yeah. Um. Cool. Oh, you're right. saying that's what you called it? Yes. The big oh. one hundred. I'm. This I is, just thought you were saying that's what we experienced. No. A lot. No. Wait. This is one hundred percent. Yeah. Like if you go to my father and you you say what is the big D and he'll say it's diarrhea. Of course, of course, like, of course, without, without flinching. What uh, what kind of context would one exclaim something with that phrase? Well, in my household, yeah. How have, did how did that go? Play that out for us. You just got back from another Chipotle dinner out with the yeah. family, and you're like, "Ooh, got the big D." Like, oh, yeah, okay, okay. okay. Right. If yeah. my son came and asked me, I would say, "Please leave the room." <laughs> That's what I would say. Yesterday, we covered the Eagles, Bengals, Ravens, Browns, Titans, Lions, Cardinals, Dolphins, Jets, Patriots, Falcons, Buccaneers, Packers, and Jags. So if you don't hear us talk about those teams, that is why. You can go to yesterday's episode, listen in, get our breakdown. Eight matchups left, starting with the Indianapolis Colts, who are 4-3, and three, taking on the 5-2 and two Houston Texans. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Houston minus 5. The under, over-under is 46 in this game. Here we go. What what what, what are you two laughing? We're at? laughing because we, if we were letting it go, man, you said Indianapolis super weird. <laughs> so I did. He, he yes. said Indianapolis. Yeah, and so we just gave each other a look. Like, did he say it wrong? And we both confirmed. Did I? Did Mike? Did you catch it? No, I did not. You never no. been to Indianapolis? <laughs> I've the not. New, it's the new Francis Ford Coppola movie. No. All oh, right. Oh, that's a good joke. Uh, Houston won 29-27 in week one. This is when we saw Anthony Richardson deliver a couple of big plays. His passing prop in this game is 186. He has the lowest adjusted completion rate, the highest off-target throw rate, the lowest catchable throw rate, and he's playing a defense that, um, you know, at home, I'm just not encouraged by what we've seen. Like, I don't, I know, Jason, you, you – on got rid of Anthony Richardson. You did manage to acquire $2 of fab. That's right. To to lose Anthony Richardson. I could have just cut him to the waiver and instead I got richer. Yeah, sure. Son. Yeah. Uh but look, Richardson to me is it not even makes sense. He's I, not he's not an option. I apologize. No, he is not. Uh, the he, the, the I Colts he, are super easy, man. I, the, I think yeah. he is an option for some. I've I've seen questions where you're as like you're, a quarterback too. As a quarterback, too, or, uh, look, in, in a lot of leagues, the, the guys that you want to play are, for instance, for instance, here's here's the, the one, Patrick Mahomes yeah, or do Anthony him. Richardson. I'd yeah, play, Mahomes, for I'd sure. I play Mahomes. Easy. Okay, how about uh, Aaron Rodgers or yeah, Anthony Rogers. Richardson? Yeah, Rodgers. I'd play Rodgers. So those are both Richardson to me, and here's why. Richardson obviously has a very, very low floor. He can, you know, he can go out there and score five point one fantasy points like he did against Chicago. Eight point eight last week, or, five point two the next week, nine point nine the week before. Twenty six point one like he did week one against the Houston Texans. He has a ceiling that a lot of these quarterbacks just don't have. So Rodgers can score twenty six points. Mahomes can score twenty six points. Ma Mahomes hasn't scored twenty points in like twenty games. I mean that that's slightly hyperbolic but I think he scored it once in the last 20 games so um this is a player who still has boom potential I agree everything we have seen are is... we gonna say have this conversation every week though genuinely I'm not saying that as a I'm just when don't we have it we we are gonna see it every week because no matter what no not no matter what we're gonna see it every week because he is going to put up 20 plus points in one of these next two or three games I mean it, it's just you can't have those physical attributes the ability to throw the ball 80 yards down the field the Houston, ability Minnesota to, Buffalo New York Detroit New England Denver Tennessee it's a bad stretch run this is why I was going to cut him this is why I traded him for two dollars of fab I'm just saying there are teams that like you're going up against a tough opponent your team looks like you are the big underdog I would throw Anthony Richardson in there for the chance of a 30 point game that's I, all that's all I'm saying I it, get it, that and look, there's leagues of course you're going to play him but like in a 12 team league where you're looking at the waiver wire and it has like legitimate options I would agree Nix, I would Bo Nix is a better start I would play Bo Nix Bo Nix has been pretty good with his rushing ability Drake May I'd play Drake May uh not against the Jets I'd put that I would go Richardson there so the May Drake May is where we're at yeah Jonathan Taylor should be back play him yeah. I'm cool with that he's he is a full play 
Other than that, you like, can't play the wide receivers. No, no, you can't. If you were going to play a wide receiver, your best bet might be Alec Pierce, and that is a pure dart throw. You got to connect on a bomb. I don't think you could start Pittman. Downs. I'm okay starting Pittman. Uh, if, if I have to start any of them, that's the one, that's who I'm starting. The gamble with Richardson is that in four or five games, he's been ten or fewer completions, so you have to distribute that among the options. That that's why I would go Alec Pierce because four or five you know if, if you've got five oh I play Pierce too I'm with you on that if you've got five completions four of them might go to uh Pittman for 40 yards but one of them might go to Alec Pierce for a 60 yard touchdown Joe Mixon's played three full games this year he's been the RB2 the RB2 and the RB3 in those three games it's he's, wild and 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 he's looked the part like yes, he's he breaking has. tackles he's looking fast he is a must start every week he's healthy my um, sorry and and so the question is just I think I think personally I'm definitely starting Stephon Diggs. My start of the week and take Dell is not like anti Diggs. He has earned those quick and easy targets. I'm also starting take Dell in this matchup just because the Colts have a beatable defense, and I think the the coaching staff, the the uh, Stroud himself, everyone is trying to get Tank Dell involved. He hasn't looked bad to me on film other than the drops. He's dropped three really important balls. I think what's interesting to me is I think the Texans are in a position, and this is where my view is different than you with Stroud in this game is that the recipe to win without Nico Collins is the running game. It's to successfully run and play defense, and I think that's the the identity of this team at this point in time. Defensive head coach, the running game is is dominant, and so I just don't see the need. For, now, look, if, if Richardson comes out and he hits two of those bombs and Stroud's in the throwing situation, uh, I'm going to be super wrong. We're, well, I, th I think we're both actually more in sync than you think. Even though we are taking different sides on the Stroud start, I, I like him this week. There, you are right. The end of this game, if the Texans are out to a lead, they're going to be able to rely on Joe Mixon and, and win. But I don't think C.J. Stroud is going to have difficulty having success in the passing game for the first half. I think he's going to carve them up. So that's where it's like, even if you can run, you're going to pass. And when he drops back to pass, he's going to find success. Uh, last week, the Colts did win the ball game that's against right. Miami. Yeah. 16 okay. to 10. They've okay. won against Miami and Tennessee the last two weeks. 16 10, 2017. Uh, okay. There aren't other options here in this game. New Orleans, nope. two and five. The Chargers are three and three coming off the Monday Night Football loss to Arizona. The DraftKings Sportsbook here. Chargers minus seven at home. Over under is 41. I heart the Chargers defense in this game. I would love to play them. Because I feel like the best situation you can have for a defense is the 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 fact that you won't have an opportunity to get blown out. And to me, with Spencer Rattler at quarterback, I got a snake, man. I don't think that that's a possibility. I am fine with the Chargers defense here. I am not fine. With, I'm not excited about players in this game. I want to read to you... Um, I want to read you six words based upon this season and the six weeks played for the Chargers. Okay. The words are, and this is the result of the game, under, 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 over, under. That is the success rate of the Chargers games hitting the over, under, the line, because the way they're playing football is dirty, ugly, boring, slow, and it's been successful well, enough for this franchise. I'd like to know yeah, what, what, what's what? the over under their on their implied points though. Twenty four is their implied. Well, for for this week, I'm just saying the like are they hitting their in team team implied total? That's. Are you asking whether we think they yeah. will? No, no, no. I'm saying for Jason saying they keep hitting the under. Well, are they hitting what their point total should be? Sure, I, I can look that up. That's not as easy to find at a glance. Right. But my point is more the game script of the entire both. Both teams. I'm talking about the Saints and the Chargers. This was my issue with the Cardinals players last week. It was like, this just looks like it could get ugly. I want to start Chris Olave. He's the number one target here. I don't love it as much with Spencer Rattler. You're going to start Alvin Kamara. He's the number one option in the whole offense, but it didn't yes. work well last week with Spencer Rattler. So you're, you're not expecting big games from either of these guys, even though you're probably going to start both of them. That's what I'm saying is like, it, this is going to be, this isn't going to be a barn burner. Slow, both teams are very, yes. very slow, slowly yep. paced. Well, and then they both, you know, like the Chargers struggle in the red zone. So they, they take up a bunch of time, they move it down the field, they do, and then they kick field goals. They do have their favorite player back 
more than likely. Taysom Hill was limited Wednesday, full practice on Thursday. Uh, so I'll be – I'm not saying I'm playing Taysom Hill. Just I'm going to be – I'll be interested to see what does the offense look like when you have Spencer Rattler and Taysom Hill is back. I, I would try personally not to play Olave. I okay. mean, Chris, Chris Olave. His has, line's at forty-seven and a half. Yeah, I would try it's not. Not to, that great. I would no. try not to play him. I mean, this is a player that you take away the game he was injured, right? You don't. Who cares, right? That yeah. game's that game's thrown out. This is a player that was on with their car, right? Like on pace for seventy-four receptions, nine hundred thirty-five yards, and three touchdowns. He had. Um, it's just a little questionable with what we saw from Spencer Rattler. I thought that was the worst quarterback play in a, it was very in a full game that we've seen from anybody. Did you go Tyler Lockett against Buffalo? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would. I would my point is I would try to find somebody else. I'm not saying gotcha. you will, but I would try to find somebody else and That hurts my feelings. That hurts <laughs> because I can't find anyone else, Andy, and so you, all you're doing is insulting me. Well, you play didn't you play Puka? Oh yeah. Heck yeah. Puka and Olave. I mean, <laughs> so if you had had Olave though yesterday with the limited snaps of Puka, would you have done it? No, I would have played Puka over Olave no matter what. I, I, I was bullish on Puka coming in even on limited snaps. I, also, to answer your question, Mike, they're they're 500 against their implied team total. Three times they've hit it, three times they haven't. It's a low over-under in the game anyways at 41, regardless of whether they hit it or not. Um, Herbert's not been an option for fantasy. None of the wideouts. In, in, this is an easy game. It, I mean, Dobbins is the start of the week, and I'm playing him. The, char the Saints defense has been the most abysmal. Yes, at tackling are. and and defending the run, Olave is a maybe to me. Like, would you genuinely like? This is probably a okay. I'm not even going to ask it. It's Olave. <laughs> I was going to say like Jameis Winston starting, and you've got pass like, catchers for Cleveland, or do you go Olave with Spencer I'd Rattler? I go Olave. Like, yeah. I I think it's an I think it's possible that Judy and Tillman both outperform Olave uh, because of the passing volume ironically uh, i agree with you i i would i would go olave over judy over tillman but if this was a flex option i would i would put Najoku ahead of olave buffalo's five and two they take on the four and three seattle seahawks we will talk about that game in just a moment gonna take a quick quick break and then uh we'll talk buffalo All right, back to the five and two Bills against the four and three Seahawks. The NFC West is four and three, three and four, three and four, three and four. So it's been, you know, we saw the Rams get a W right back in the mix. In this game, Buffalo's three point road favorites. The over under is forty six and a half. It feels like Amari Cooper is going to be a stabilizer in terms of the way we view the Buffalo offense and it's week-to-week -week consistency. To me, I feel like now that you have a player like Amari Cooper, we no longer have to look at every week as Josh Allen has to piece it together with a bunch of inconsistent options. It looks like, to me, that Cooper is this foundational piece that's going to make Dalton Kincaid fit into the right slot, that's going to make Shakir fit into the right slot, are you as optimistic about what he represents to the offense as I am? I am. Uh, the way that Josh Allen has played in his career, he's awesome, but he loves to throw to guys that are open. He finds a guy with separation and he laser beams the ball. That's not the rest of the core. Like Keon Coleman is like a 50-50 jump ball guy that's not getting separation. Same with uh, the Mack truck. You know, this is – they finally have a player who not at the line of scrimmage like Shakir, but someone that can go 15 yards down the field – run a crisp route and find space and then that's where catch it with his body <laughs> yeah what why is cooper developed into a body catcher it's easier it's the much more difficult yeah. no it, no it's easier you don't have to lift your arms up it's, oh, you you're i'm, saying, I'm saying literally physical you barely action look, at, look at this yeah. look at this you can barely oh i yeah. see it I now see watch it. this that yeah. so so for the listening audience raising your arms all the way above your head to catch a ball is more work than just right. halfway raising them mm -hmm. up. But yeah, it's it's I I still like Cooper. His receiving line for this game is 54 and a half receiving yards. That's a fine line for a wide receiver one. I'm a little concerned. My big question and and this is this is personal. G <laughs> Geno Smith. Geno Smith has been on fire. He's been playing great. He's been playing some really nice looking ball. He's like a uh, just a tier below the way Baker Mayfield's been playing. Baker's been completely on fire. Baker's been throwing the touchdowns. Geno's been doing everything 
but the touchdowns. But, the touchdowns. Yeah. but they've looked very similar as far as pocket movement, quality, accuracy of passes, decision making. It's just the touchdowns have been there for Mayfield and not for Geno. But in this game, you you do have a little bit of rain projected, uh, twelve mile an hour winds. So not this isn't a a worry, you know, bench receiving options, but it's not optimal conditions. And you don't know the health of DK Metcalf. So can you where does where does someone like Geno Smith you know sort into your quarterback rankings right now because I've had a real difficult time with him this week I think you brought up the fundamental decision making piece which is DK Metcalf's availability I don't want to start Geno leaning on just JSN and Lockett against a a passing defense that's 10th against quarterbacks 8th against wide receivers so far this year um, it gives me hesitation because Metcalf is the you talked about him struggling with touchdowns, and Metcalf is the touchdown maker. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. I, I would be trying to make my decision based off of Metcalf. Dak they, Prescott on the road against San Francisco or Geno in this matchup? If I had to choose today, yeah. I don't feel great about Metcalf today, so I'll go. I'd go Dak as I'll well. I'll go Dak. Lineup adjusted. Well, and the just schedule-wise, it's, it's a much harder matchup for the quarterback and the wide receiver. Andy said that, and – I mean, the Seahawks are going to be getting in the zone all day, guys. In the bone zone. The bone zone. Uh, obviously, you start Kenneth <laughs> Walker. <laughs> Get it. The 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 Bills defense has been pretty good against quarterbacks, against wide receivers. Um, they have been terrible against r running backs. This is a run funnel. So Kenneth Walker well, is limited with illness. I mean, this guy's what's going. What's going on here, Kenneth? Yeah, maybe take take a multivitamin or something. Yeah, get on some IVs. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of illness going around the NFL this past couple well, of he, weeks. I mean, he he popped up late at the end of last week with the illness. You know, was downgraded to questionable. Played. He didn't play his normal amount. He still looked awesome, and then he popped up again with the illness. It's it's weird. Uh, if Metcalf misses, uh, there's been questions about Lockett. Questions about JSN. Are those guys? Like is Lockett a must start at that point? Not a must I, start, but a, but a fine. Would you play either of those Seattle wide receivers over uh, Khalil Shakir in the same game? Where yeah, I would, yeah. I, I would. If if uh, if Metcalf is gone, I would play both those guys over Shakir with the addition of. Amari what about Cooper. Dobbs? Would you play both of those guys over Dobbs against Jacksonville? No, I expect that the Green Bay passing offense is going to go out there and go hard in the paint. So you 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 have a much higher odds of a touchdown to me for Dobbs I would go Dobbs what's the feeling on James Cook right now I think with Ray Davis emerging with Cook's injury we are not living off the high of the first couple of weeks we know he's the main guy but you know have you have you cooled it all on James Cook and I where he's not. headed I, I have not he's he still is he's still coming through I get it the, like this past week against Tennessee that was the like his worst performance also didn't get Despite a target scoring Yes, yeah. I mean, he's 12 for 32 on the ground. That's not very James Cook-like. And getting no targets is also strange. But he was still he was still close to his normal amount of snaps, so he's he's in as regular for me. Kenneth Walker, by the way, in this game, he is currently the RB4 in points per game, just behind Saquon and Mixon. So if you don't understand how good he's been or you feel like maybe the manager of Kenneth Walker doesn't understand how good he's been. Oh, we know. Uh, take advantage. What's so, his rushing line? 62 and a half. That is, that's a nice baseline to have. Uh, Dalton Kincaid, start of the week. That's an area where Seattle struggles. I really want to see this as a breakout game for Kincaid where he's going to start entering the streaming tight end category for me personally. That's and then fair. keep an eye on is. Keon Coleman as a compliment yeah. with Cooper because it was a big game last week for him. Yeah, I, I, I going back to Dalton Kincaid, I think Kincaid already is a streaming option where I would look if there was – if there was another good option, you know, if I, had, <laughs> if I had picked up, um, you know, David Njoku, I would be willing to, you know, pivot. However, oh, for sure, for streaming candidates, you know, you play the matchup. This is a great matchup. So this is a even if Dalton Kincaid is a streamer, he should start in this game. The Carolina Panthers at one and six travel to the oh boy, they travel to the altitude in Denver. Who, oh boy, Denver is uh, really playing good football. Four and three. Denver, 10.5-point favorites. What's that face? Jim? That was the 10.5. That gives Carolina 15 points. The over-under is 41.5. The Denver defense, 
is um, delicious. This game opened at minus seven, and then like the Bryce Young news came out, and now it's ten and a half. And now Deontay is out. Deontay Johnson is out. Oh yeah. man, good smart, and, smart Deontay. And, but but don't worry, yes. Patrick Sertan full practice on Thursday. It's for the Panthers side. It is legitimately. He doesn't even know who he has to cover now. I don't think he has to. Sertan's man. like, I'm back. Wh you, wh where's the Where's the whiteouts? His, his, Feel yeah, it? I want to bring up some. Uh. I want to bring up some history. <laughs> no, he's out. In Dude. our first season, playing flag football. Oh my good! I you know where I'm going, don't you? No, I like this is. I, I swear. Wait, what to are you, you talking I about? I swear to you, I had the exact same thought of. Do I bring up this story? Yeah. What so story? in the first season of us playing flag football, which was now like which I was don't know, a, 15 a, years ago, which is a ragtag group of guys approaching middle age who had very little to zero football experience. Yeah, and so we go out there in the first season. Well, just uh, well, here's how the first season went. Towards the end of the season, we scored a touchdown. We celebrated like we won the championship. Yeah, I think that was our only touchdown. Yes, of the yes year. it was. <laughs> but we had a game yeah. where we were playing uh -huh. a good team. <laughs> And that team had a, <laughs> a word I don't want to say. He was he was uh, he was emphatically letting us know that his team is way better than ours because he was playing basically like the safety role. Yeah, and he was playing that from the crisscross applesauce yeah. position. He sat down. He sat down, <laughs> and he played in the secondary, <laughs> sitting down. He sat, and we couldn't score we, on them. It was we were playing seven on six, and so. <laughs> And so that's Sertan doesn't need You're to saying, cover anyone. It's so funny because it popped into my head, and I'm like, I don't, that don't, do people care about this? But I thought it immediately. Sertan should just try Sit that on down. for size because it is a mind game. And I'll tell you what, it it worked. That was some great defense. <laughs> we really imploded. Now, for the record, would you get a yeah, I knew this for the stuff. record about was it four or five years later as our ragtag group got it together, we did win the championship yes. in that league. Uh, <laughs> Would you get a penalty flag if you sat down? I don't Would think so. Would that be so. considered taunting? I don't think so. You're not. You're being very inactive. <laughs> just, you, but, did you point or did you put the thumb up? Because then that's oh, a, yeah. that's a weapon. The the question on the Panther side, only question for me: Do you play Chuba or in like the, the matchup? The full strength Panthers against the Broncos. You're already like, Ooh, I don't really want to play Chuba now. Oh man, can you play Chuba? I think so. You play him the way you're playing Ramondre with the confidence. Like, Which one of those two are you playing, Ramondre or Chuba? I would I would play Chuba. He's been a top 24 wide receiver, or I mean a running back, in five straight games on a one and six team. So it, it's volume, it's passing game. I just think you, you just put him in there. I, that, I, I literally have that choice in Dynasty. Chuba's in my lineup. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I don't you, like the matchup, but I mean it's just – over the course the course of the game, you what? you had a parlay parte on Chuba earlier this year with four receptions. I think three of the four came on the last drive of the game. I mean, you do get garbage time. What if I told you though, Chuba in games where Bryce Young was the starting quarterback, Chuba was running back sixty six and twenty six. I would go back to last season, the second half, where Chuba That's, was on a heater, and that was yeah, all. Yeah, it's too Young. limited this year on in those two matchups. Yeah, I'm trying. And he wasn't getting the work as much. I am trying. Okay, here's very a, hard. I mean, to would you? Well, actually I've play? got a, I've got another name for you because I personally I would go Ramondre Stevenson over Chuba, but okay. How about Ra Raheem Mostert? Yeah, I'd play him over against Chuba? the Arizona oh, yeah. Cardinals oh, yeah. with Tua there. Yeah, he's gonna get a ton of work. Okay, what about Madison against the Chiefs? I would play Madison. Man, I think I go Chuba there because both defenses, like Madison and Chuba, have both been pretty good. Surprisingly good, but Chuba is better than Madison as a yeah, player. Yeah, Chuba has actually and they're looked both much better. terrible defenses right. or or dip, but, good defense. Good Bo, luck. Ni Bo Nix has been averaging thirty six rushing yards per game. Bo Nix is in play this week against Absolutely. Carolina. You might need to just ignore the name and just play the player and the situation. Javante Mike start of the week. A rushing line is sixty four and a half. We'll take it. Great opportunity there. I do think that the ball finds Cortland Sutton this week. I'm not trying to play him, but I think Cortland Sutton is going to. Get back to um, more than zero targets. Yes, and Troy Franklin could be a DFS dart throw or a, a break. You know, glass, break glass case yeah. of emergency you, player. He was going to be in my lineup if Puka was not playing. Are you going to play anybody else in Carolina? Like take a shot on? No, no, no. I mean, so Thielen's out. Absolutely not. Thielen Deontay is Johnson out. is out. Okay. Xavier Leggett's a rookie, 
And then we're talking about what, Jalen Coker? Absolutely not. I mean, Bryce Young is not set up for success in this game. And this then is got, not the one you want to get him back in on. No, but uh, Jatavian Sanders, DFS dart throw. He's been know, limited, though. He's been limited with a very interesting injury, but the last two weeks, mm -hmm. 13 total targets, four for uh, five for 49, six for 61. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, I don't know. It's I'm, You're not nope. having a great game. I'm just saying like DFS. Yep. And um, yeah, play your, play your Broncos and keep pounding. Yeah. Kansas City, the Chiefs, 6-0, and taking on the 2-5 and Las Vegas Raiders. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Kansas City minus 9.5 on the road. The over-under is 41.5. Start up your cream hunts. I think Patrick Mahomes is a streamable quarterback. That's, yeah. Mike, if you were Bo Nix or Patrick Mahomes? Oh, my gosh. I think I'd go Bo Nix. That's okay. Yeah, I'm not going to fight for Mahomes. I just yeah. think he's an option. I'd play him personally over Richardson. Yeah, my rank, I do have, I have Bo Nix in my top 12. Mahomes is currently at 15. I love Andy Reid's comment on DeAndre Hopkins' arrival saying, you know, when they asked him whether he's going to play, he said, quote, why wait, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. have you seen my, Andy he should have said, have you seen my wide receiver room? Andy Reid is a national treasure. He's delightful. But Hopkins will help. Hopkins will help move the sticks. Are you playing Hopkins immediately? Like Andy Reid? I mean, his line is 37 and a half. I don't want to. I think it'll be limited snaps. I think it'll be, you know, we had two of these situations last week mm -hmm. with Devontae Adams and with Amari Cooper. Cooper got in the end zone. Hopkins could score. I can see Andy Reid 100% like creating some specific plays inside the 15 that are Hopkins. Like I that is, that makes sense to me. So, I do think he's got a shot to score. Hopkins or Cortland Sutton? I play Hopkins. I sure. at that point I would I would play Hopkins as well. I expect the the running game to take over for Denver at some point. Yeah, you're going to need a touchdown to be happy with Hopkins. I agree with you. Andy Reid could design up a player too, but that's just such a limited. You know, it's not like Mahomes has been throwing a lot of touchdowns. And so if you're trying to say the reason Cooper had a good game last week was he had a touchdown. You know, he didn't run that many snaps, wasn't in that many packages. Uh, he, he was four for 66 with a touchdown. It was great. Without that touchdown, you'd be like, Oh no, Mahomes. Yeah. It, yeah I mean, he, he has not thrown a touchdown in two consecutive games against New Orleans and San Francisco. There's a chicken and egg factor of losing Rashi rice and losing uh talent at wide receiver. But they also know that they can hand the ball to cream hunt 52 times and win this game. Their defense outstanding against the run. That's why Madison is, is terrifying. Although Man. his, Rushing receiving combo line is sixty one yards. He is scary and just the matchup. If he if Alexander Madison were completely alone, um, and now a okay, guy, I'm not saying Zamir White is a good player at all, but Zamir White is is actually healthy again. He was only in on fourteen percent of the snaps. There, it's been kind of up and down between who's getting the the snaps and the opportunities between him and Madison. Madison keeps scoring touchdowns. He was which was an impossibility last year. He he can't stop now. But so Zamir White's return plus the defense here. Madison is a he he's a, a pretty desperate running back start. Jason, you said that Dalton Kincaid's a streaming tight end. Is Travis Kelsey a streaming tight end? Uh, he's had two good games and the rest have been disappointing. No, I, I think Travis Kelsey is more than a streaming tight end. You're going to start him every week. Um, I, I'm not looking at the matchups, but if you are looking at the matchups, the worst team at guarding the tight end position is the Kansas City Chiefs themselves. And Brock Bowers um, obviously is, is by most people's rankings, he's the tight end one right now going forward. He's the one that you are most assured of a, around 10 targets a week he's going to catch a lot of them get yards he can yak um you know we we did see week one is ironic because week one is part of why the Kansas City Chiefs are num number 32 against tight end right, because Isaiah yeah, yeah. likely went nuts against yeah. them however they completely schemed Mark Andrews the you know uh, at that point the presumed major offensive weapon at tight end they took him completely out of the game so maybe they they roll some of that to Bowers but either they way will. you're starting him all right, let's move on to a very important Sunday night football game, right? We have Jaden Daniels and the Commanders. No, Jaden Daniels? 
That's mm, a better way to put Jaden it. Jaden Daniels. Uh, uh -huh. We did get an update. Uh, they pushed him today in practice. Like over? Um, <laughs> and they said Busted. they will assess how he responds to the work that they did. It will be a game time decision. So this is big. Sunday night making your uh, GTD. Yeah. I mean, Sunday you're, night. You're, so your pivot. Wait, we have two Monday night games? Oh, oh no. Wait. What are the what was the order that do we have we have Dallas and San Francisco as Sunday that's not Sunday night. They flex the That's where I got really Yeah, confused. they we we've got our doc uh backwards here. Okay. Um Yeah. Or did they flex it back? What? What is going on? I thought it was I, Sunday we, night. We were told that the, the the Bears commanders game had gotten flexed into primetime. Hmm. Got, that was a couple weeks ago. Did it man. get unflexed? Can yeah, you got, can you unflex? Uh, deflex. I don't think you can deflex. Can you deflex? The Brooks? NFL can do what it wants. Was the report wrong? Brooks, what time you, are these games? Can you deflex? NFL schedule. I think you can deflex by like not working out for a while, but I don't know. All well, right. Well, let's games, talk about the Bears. I mean, yeah, the Bears and Commanders are the after in their afternoon. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, I swear I did. We all Mandela affected that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna find the. There's report. a parallel universe somewhere where that is the Sunday night football game. But anyways, it's not. So then uh, you've got more flex yeah, ability. That's, which that's that's great news. If uh, if you're waiting on Jaden Daniels, if you're so if, it was it was flexed to the late afternoon. It was early. Oh. It was previously a, an earlier game. Gotcha. gotcha so we okay. were right on the flex, wrong on the spot. You got it. All right. Okay. The are Thank you playing Jaden? If Jaden is active, are you playing him or are you trying to find a streaming option? If Jaden is active, I am playing him. I mean, because when I look at this week's options, I, I think that a lot of the streaming players are mediocre to bad. The the, the players that you would have in consideration that, that have been playing well, like Geno Smith and Baker Mayfield, who you might be like, oh, yes, I'll, I'll be fine to wait. You've got major major red flags are like I would have made I would have played Darnold if that was my decision because it, sure. it, it, it projected to be good he was my quarterback eight outside of that I don't think most people are going to have like I'm not going to Kirk Cousins and Bo Nix and and uh, those types but I, uh, I also I want to really quickly just correct something I said on the show yesterday that was wrong oh um, about Jaden Daniels I compared him and Kyler and said they were only a point apart in points per game that was because off the cuff I was looking at our our stats, he, not factoring and I the didn't take game. out the injury game for okay. Jaden. They're about five points apart. Yeah, that's that four, sounds, four and a half uh, points apart. Much better. But, so, um, but since they are the afternoon game, Bo Nix is in the afternoon game as well. If you're if you're going to ride with Jaden, that would be my suggestion. Yeah, that one that one is workable. Go go pick up Bo right now, and I mean, Jason, you literally took the risk on a Puka, knowing the upside, and the upside of Jaden Daniels is tremendous. And I also, I don't believe that this team. At five and two is willing to jeopardize him, so I think if they put him out there, they think he can play the game. Yeah, it's just the the ribs, man. You one one sack, and he it yeah. could limit his running game. Yeah, it's 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 dangerous, but he's been so good. Caleb's been good as well. Caleb Williams, his passing line is wow. two twenty seven and a half. That's really nice. That's what I was wowing the the two twenty seven and a half as a passing line for a. The rookie coming in, that that's great. You have Swift, Moore, Allen, Adunze, and Komet, all weapons available to him now. You have a defense that struggled against wide receivers this year. Washington giving up almost 30 points to them. This is not – like, you want Jaden to play because you want this game to be yeah. an exciting back and forth. I still think it's possible with the way Mariota played last week that you do get an exciting performance. It's not Jacksonville, right? Chicago's not playing Jacksonville again. But the last, like his evasiveness, opening up plays down the field, the fact Cole Komet has completely got the stranglehold on the tight end position again, which he should have from the jump, that was a mistake. The fact that this Classic offense is – Waldron. Hey, the offense is coming together. I'm going to give is. Waldron credit for what – look, Swift has been valuable for three straight weeks. Yeah. Caleb's been good. Keenan scored touchdowns. DJ Moore has had good games. This is what you wanted to see. So the number one uh, start sit question right now is <laughs> one that you <laughs> literally have your league of yep. record team. You have Kyler Murray and you have Caleb Williams. This is a very interesting question. I know where I lean in this. They're both on the road. They're both on the road. Um, the, the matchups are Kyler's against Miami, and obviously this one is uh, Caleb playing against the Commanders. 
I can tell you who's in my lineup right now. Who do you think it is? I think it would be Caleb. Caleb. It's, it's Caleb. Yeah. I would play Caleb. I would as well. Uh, it, you know, and again, contextual to your league. I also have James Conner. I don't want double exposure to the Cardinals on the road, East Coast, Miami, good defense. What do you do though the, with the with the pass catchers? Because the I, I think DJ Moore is just he's in your lineup. It hasn't been great. Uh, you know, you have one really strong game. Every other game is just kind of eh. It's for it, me. It's it's more in Komet, and that's it. That's it's so weird. Of the passing line is two twenty seven, which I I think that's fine. That's fair. But where does it go? Like these are like Houdini yards just disappearing into the ether because DJ Moore has not been – Romo Dunze has been, I mean, catastrophic for fantasy football. It, and it, Keenan has not been good either. He just caught two touchdowns last week. If you are wanting Like where, success, where are these yards if, going? I can tell you where they're going. DJ Moore and Cole Komet each have a 24% over the last two weeks – of of the market, so half half of the team's uh, the yards, yards are the targets, the yards. yards. Okay, so the yardage is going to DJ Moore and Cole Komet, and so that's over the last two weeks. But th that's the trend that we're hoping to see more of. Caleb, you throw out the beginning of the year where he was struggling, throwing for eighty yards or whatever. Like right. those, if that's what he does, then the answer is nobody. If you're looking for the answer in a positive game, it's those two players. I agree with Andy. It's DJ Moore and Cole Komet. Uh, I'm not going to do the Alan Odunze stuff right now. I agree. Terry McLaurin, what do you do if Jaden is missing in this <sighs> game? Are you are I, you trying I'm not trying to start to, him? Yes, I am trying not to start him if he misses. Olave uh, or Terry McLaurin? That's a great question. Um, they're in very, very similar situations. I lean towards Olave personally. I'm a little the, on the TMC side. Mike. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. But the, the difference maker for me is that the Chicago Bears passing defense is really, really good. And so I, I, I believe that will be harder for the backup quarterback to do work against. However, six for the 98 last quality week. of the yeah. backup quarterback is much better. Mariota, greater sign, Spencer Rattail. Brian yeah. Robinson, top 24 in every game he's played. You play him. Yes, Zach Ertz you hope always, he scores. Zach Ertz is always a uh, break glass tight yep. end. I mean, he... He's been a top 10 tight end three times this year. He's been not bad three other times. So, yeah. We did get a Senator touchdown last week. Oh, yes, we did. I am the Senate. 2025, everybody. Uh, we have Sunday Night Football, Monday Night Football to talk about. We'll take a break, come back with those exciting games. All right, Dallas three and three, San Francisco three and four. Uh, Kinda, last last place, San Francisco four. I mean, yes, Thank yes. You, uh, let's go to the Falcon and get his thoughts on it. Oh, is that why he's not here? Is this depression oh, for yeah. his Niners? I get that. I get that. Last place being behind the Cardinals. Yeah, yeah. that's you embarrassing. Must be so embarrassed. Uh, no retort. Oddly, look, Dallas needs to win this ball game, but the 49ers are four and a half point home favorites. The over under is forty seven. This is a very consequential game at this stage of the season for both teams. Mm -hmm. Dallas can slip to three and four, or they can be back above five hundred and and on the right track. San Francisco could slip to three and five with hopes that McCaffrey comes back. Already lost Ayuk. I would say that Brock Purdy had he he had his struggles last week, and um, we know the struggles that Dallas defense has had. So you know Vegas has it as San Francisco minus four and a half. We're waiting on news on Debo. We don't think we'll have Juwan Jennings. You've got rookies in Ricky Pearsall and Jacob Cowing trying to fill in the gap. You know, they're going to lean on the running game. Yeah, this is the Jordan Mason game. His rushing line it, is at yeah. 80 and a half yards. That's his, That's the line that DK is setting for him. Uh, I mean, all the, like Andy said, the passing weapons are gone and the matchup. The Cowboys, one of the worst teams against the run. If you're adjusting for schedule, they're 26th, and Mason was Mason was right back in last week. You know the it was up in the air. Is he going to be there with the shoulder? How much work? The answer was all of it. Uh, so Mason is in with full confidence. Yeah, Dallas is running defense. I doubt they fixed it over the break. Yeah, the nice thing is they are coming off of the break. They are getting a couple defensive players back. So this is if Dallas wants to make noise, make the playoffs, both these teams. I mean, this is such an important game. I do want to remind people, I mentioned this tweet on Wednesday from Jamie Eisenberg, but they're talking about Dak coming off of the bye, how awesome he's been. In seven career games after the bye, Dak Prescott averages 28.1 fantasy points. 
and uh, he only has one outing over that span with fewer than 22.3 fantasy points. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine playing Dak. If you want, I think this one's closer than you than than you'd think. Jalen Tolbert will be on the field for 90 plus percent of snaps in this game. I would probably play Jalen Tolbert based on the game script and the quarterback over Chris Olave. Ooh, that's, I think that's, that's where the, I think that's where the names are going to get people. That that might be. I am a little concerned. I, I mentioned this earlier. A little bit concerned about the weather on the West Coast this week. As of now, sixty five percent degrees, big chance of rain and percent and, degrees. But the the Whoa. out of what percent degrees out of <laughs> out of uh, out of the <laughs> imperial scale. Um, <laughs> but the fourteen mile an hour winds are wind is really what. Uh, has an effect on the passing game this is not like red alert again but i just we're still a couple days away we, we don't know how it's going to be i uh, you know it going to tolbert on a on a late game where you've got to have made your decision early in the week that's a little scary for me what are you are there other decisions here to be made i mean dak is is not um other than leaning on his out of the buy like the matchup itself is not ideal they're Implied point total is 21. Purdy's in the same game. Both of those guys have been on waivers or streamers. Are you playing Dak over Purdy then? Um, I think I would, yes. Uh, we talked about Mason. Debo, if he's healthy, this might come down to a game time Gosh. decision. If he's active, are you playing Debo? I am going to play Debo if he's active. With Brandon Ayuk and Juwan Jennings off the field, they will need him. Um, obviously, Last week, the illness kept him completely um, out of the game, and and they did need him in that game. So it's it's scary, but he he tweeted to a kid that he's good. Well, so I yeah I, he doesn't I, want to let that kid but down. Is it like a Babe Ruth? You know good, what I mean? That's good. as in like I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in gonna the hospital. Die, yeah. I'm gonna die, kid. Like I mean, don't be scared. He needs his lungs. To I mean, play does, football. Does this mean that Ricky Pearsall should be in play against a bad Cowboys defense? If you are, he, if Debo yeah. is Pearsall, yeah, yeah, he's in play even if Debo plays. I, I think so too. I think he's. I uh, would play Pearsall over Tolbert. You need a like Debo. Debo has his role in this offense, and with no Juwan Jennings and Ayuk, I think Pearsall will get his target. Yeah, I agree. I and, am. Yeah. yeah. For the running backs of the Dallas Cowboys, as much as I want to say, do they have any of those? As much as I want to say, let's go. Dowdle, I don't know what they're going to do. My hope is that they went into the bye week, they went back to the film and said, why were we such big, stupid, dummy, dum-dums and be, and uh, bow to the knee of Ezekiel Elliott's complaints that he's sad and not getting the ball. I'm hoping that they see that and go, we just we have to go Rico Dowdle moving forward, but I don't, I can't say with confidence yeah, his, that, that will his happen. His DK rushing line is only 45 and a half, so there's not a lot of confidence and success here. Jake Ferguson, how are you feeling about him? He's been a little disappointing in the opportunity that had been presented him, at least the last the, game. The Cowboys have been disappointing. So yeah. as as the Cowboys go, so will Jake Ferguson. The Monday night football game, we get the Daniel Jones New York Giants. Can we stop prime timing them? <laughs> yeah, they they should they, they, they do feel not like they belong. get prime time <laughs> so much. Well, they're from New York. Makes sense. But Big they, market. no, it shouldn't make sense. No, no, no. I I'm just saying I understand the we the have, business side of it, but the but, but play it, side of it is awful. I know. Look, the Adam Malik neighbors, that's really exciting. But, like, yeah. what what in the off season was the huge thing of – Doesn't matter. Like, I get the Jets. Man, I've been waiting to watch them without Saquon. You're like, hey, Rodgers is back for the Jets. Let's put them on prime time. Like, okay, I get it. What are we doing with the Giants? The nice thing for the NFL is if they put on the biggest fart fest – crap show of all time ratings are going to be fantastic. yeah we'll all watch it exactly yeah, I mean, they dude, don't care hustle wilson in this game man <laughs> pittsburgh at home what's the over under 36 and a half <laughs> oh <laughs> blarf <laughs> blarf that is the lowest limited over under for a monday night football game since 2010 i look the giants defense is not you a, did this nfl they're not a pushover defense and Pittsburgh is obviously going to be able to stop the Giants' offense. Yeah. So then, from a from a fantasy perspective, ew. Yes. Ew. Yes. I don't. I look. Neighbors and Pickens are going to be in lineups, but I don't know if their stat lines are going to. I don't know if the box score is going to show you something special at the end of this week. I think Neighbors and Pickens will both be fine in this game because there's such a consolidation of targets to them. Uh, there's there's really no other options. The running game is interesting because you've had Tyrone 
Tracy on a, a heater, uh, but Devin Singletary came back and you had a bad game, even though Tyrone Tracy still had 67% of the snaps last week. Six for 23. Yeah, it was it was a very disappointing game. I don't think you could start either no, one of those running no. backs against the Steelers. Najee Harris? Yeah. I Jaylen mean, Najee, Warren? Najee, you're going to play. Because yeah. they're going to be ahead. They're six-point favorites, if I didn't mention it, on the DK Sportsbook. His line, 62 and a half. And I, look, Najee's just going to get the rock. And he looks good. And I'm not one to say that. No, you're not. That means it's real. Um, He's I would the RB 19 on the year right now. Yeah, feel and feels like 18. You oh, know what you I mean? Betcha. Like, yeah, you I watch. Betcha. I'm like, he feels like a 17, 18. He's range. looking even better than he's performing. No, so. this is more fun to be on the bad side of it. I, <laughs> I'm concerned for Najee. I like if I have him, I'm I'm starting him as a running back too until I see otherwise. But just projecting for the, this game, project the projecting this game and the future of the Steelers. This is a Jalen Warren statement or what? It it's just like everybody's back. Do you think that the Muth can get loose at all with Russell Wilson? He was two for fifty-one last week. He's only had three targets in three straight weeks. Is it? Uh, no. I think the Muth is a fine Not streaming option, and so when you look at the streaming options, this is a bad matchup. Yeah. It's a low over under. You've got yeah. a top six defense against tight ends in the in the Giants. This isn't one where I'd be like, "That's the matchup I'm playing a streamer." Uh, more uh, updates on Jaden Daniels. He said he felt good at practice. Wants to play. "Quote: It's not my decision." Uh, something that Mike Evans would never hear. And then Todd Bowles said Bucky Irving will play barring a setback. Well, that's good. So there you go. And I can't wait. To oh, all let's right. Let's not go. do this. It better be good. Fantasy Face Off presented by DraftKings. Oh, by the way, I got a, I got a lot of social media heat on my lineup from last week. It was first place without a quarterback. Just so you know, like the heat that I got, that I was going to be back in the shame. Yeah, I I, I was on top. I will say and this: somebody whatever, else wasn't. Whatever my costume is, which was deserved from a bad performance, um, it better be good because of two things. One, you've been telling people, pay, yeah. just wait till Friday. And also, this morning I get in, and this is the first time this has ever happened. <laughs> Andy tells me as a warning. I need to send my lineup to the deucers just in case. Well, you have a glasses issue. Okay. All so, right. I mean, you, if I, yeah, we you, put you read, in any kind of mask, you may not be able to don't see. Don't read All too right. much into this. Let's go. Wheel of shame. All right. Something's going on with the eyes. Let's roll this uh, wheel. wheel. I saw a pizza face. Yeah, Mike, uh -huh. take us through it. See, uh, Frat boy. Uh, the blender. <laughs> oh, Andy Reid? <laughs> now, we have a very... Uh, uh, you, do I have a red shirt? <laughs> nah, bro. Oh, uh, you know... Oh. Here you go. We got the whole gear. You start here. Okay. Okay. You, you got to get the glasses <laughs> off, probably. Um, just for the play-by-play, -play, there is a walrus... <laughs> There's a walrus mask going on, and then Jason's got a he's got to put this hat on. I can't see now. Anything. Okay, yeah, put, put the I, hat on. Think, there's no eye holes. <laughs> there's the eyes are covered. Yeah, that's why we needed your lineup. Okay, well, I'll oh, go. you got to put the headset on though. You got to. Put <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Oh man, Andy. Is that oh, you? That's me. <laughs> oh, boy. Andy Reid. I got um, some creative things coming. <laughs> YouTube.com slash The Fantasy okay. Football. I hope you can use Hopkins this week. Is uh, he going to play? I hope so, but he's not in my DraftKings lineup. Can uh, you hear me? Yeah, we can sort hear you. Sort of. Yeah, you sound great. You look great. Yeah. I can we get the – why are we just, not on the solo cam right okay. now? Right now, let me, let me walk people through what I'm seeing. <laughs> okay. I have whatever this is. What That's is a nostril. nose hole. Okay, I can see one little speck. I'm looking through a keyhole Like here. a speck of light? And I'm just looking through my nose, and I can see, like, right now. We better get into these lineups. Right now, I see... 18.1 on my screen. That's only I don't know what it means, but that's <laughs> what that's the amount of vision I have. Al, do you want to That's wanna... the uh, fantasy points per game for one of your running backs. Okay, I see that now. I moved to the left. All right. All okay. right. Look, we got to get into yeah. this. Quarterbacks, uh Al, who does Jason have at no, quarterback? I, I, I can do this. Can you do it? I'm going to look through my nose and come out on top. I've got Jordan Love. <laughs> when he talks, his jaw's moving a little bit. <laughs> and Jordan Love is 70 yeah, the tooth. Jordan Love is 7100. <laughs> 
<laughs> right now, he's going to throw five touchdowns this week. Why is the tooth moving? <laughs> it's like fit in his face. <laughs> when I breathe, when I breathe, it's very difficult. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. How does it smell? Uh, it smells like. A walrus? Poison? It smells like plastic. Nice whiskers. Thank uh, I, you. I've got Jordan Love, too. I knew you would, both of you, and I don't yeah. I don't live that life. I, I know you should play cash. I got Joe Burrow. I okay. got Joe Burrow at 7,000 against Philadelphia at, at home. Don't mind it. All right, uh, Mr. Reed, who's at running back for you? I've got Brees Hall and Devon Achan. Brees Hall sitting at 7,300, and Achan at a disgustingly uh, yeah. offensive. Can't read it. <laughs> 6200 okay what is something like that Who you got mike that's correct uh i have the king henry the oh 90 Browns. was he like 9200 80, 8100 for derrick henry and Spinning then and up and my start of the week javante williams at 6000 i knew javante would be in there for you i do have Brees hall with jason at 7300 and i went with uh one of your favorite players andy um Kareem did Hunt. Just, did you just talk to yourself? No, oh, he's no, talking to you, Mr. Reed. You're Andy Reed oh, okay. right now. All Kareem right. Hunt is 6,300, and I'm taking him against Las Vegas, running out that clock, carry after carry after carry, Brees Hall, Kareem Hunt. There is a greater than 0% chance I pass out before I finish <laughs> these lineups. <laughs> Hurry up. All right, my wide receivers, I'm going with A-chance teammate Tyreek Hill yep. uh, at 7,000. I've got Jaden Reed to stack with. Jordan Love, and I've got Tim Patrick. Tim Patrick oh. down at 3,500 without Got a fireball in there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I'll be shocked if Andy doesn't have Tyreek Hill because the 7,000 is yeah. just too – If you don't have Tyreek Hill, you're doing it wrong. It's absurd. Uh, I, my stack, I'm going with Romeo Dobbs over Jaden Reed, and then I got – He's trying T to get a breath right now. T don't do that. No cheating. The uh, breathing is cheating? Yeah. Yeah, right, it Mike, is. <laughs> Mike, who T are you three? Who are you three? Tyree, you see, Romeo when Dobbs. Actually, when I breathe hard. T. Higgins, 6,500. Yeah. <laughs> All right, stop doing that. You're going to make yourself pass T. Out. Higgins and who else? Romeo Dobbs. I've got uh, I've got A.J. Brown at 8,200, T. Higgins at 6,500, and Tim Patrick at 3,500. Jason, you got to get through this line. I will die in this mess. <laughs> um, I've got K. Dotton at tight end. Yeah, 3,500. Javante Williams at flex. Okay. Yeah. And the 6, Bears defense against hopefully Mariota. Dang. Okay, that's some overlap. I got Kate, <laughs> I got Kate Otten. We got to get through this. I got the Bears, and my cheap play is Cedric Tillman at 3,300. I've got Otten at 3,500, Rashad Bateman at 4,300, and the Chargers wow. defense against You're New going Orleans. You're going Tyreekless. I'm going Tyreekless. Okay. 3,300. Wow. Um, I'm going I am surprised. Yeah. Look. We got to get through this. That yeah. was Fantasy Forecast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Jason's going to pass out. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code BALLERS. That's the code BALLERS for everyone uh, to score up to 100% profit boost on any NFL touchdown parlay. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. <laughs> We're going to get out of here. Kill me. And um, YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers if you want to see a man. Um, suffocating struggling for breath uh, goodbye gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER in New York call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369 in Connecticut help is available for problem gambling call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas 21 and over age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction void in Ontario one boost per day when offered NFL touchdown parlays only maximum 105% boost other wagering restrictions apply for additional terms and responsible gaming resources see dkng.co slash ftball.